Hello, welcome back to another episode of Tea Time in Paris. Today's video will be all about trench coats. So in this video, I'll share my tips on how to choose the perfect trench coat for you. So the trench coat is such a classic wardrobe staple that if there's one item you should invest in for the spring season that will last you for years and decades to come, it is a classic trench coat. There are a few dimensions to look at when choosing a trench coat. First, the style, classic versus minimalist, the overall cut, the color, and the material. We'll get into each of these dimensions, and I'll also have a few recommendations from different brands at different price points throughout the video. So stay tuned. First, when it comes to a trench coat, the most classic styles are the ones that resemble military coats because this is where trench coats were invented. So if you want the most classic trench coat that will never go out of style, you should choose one with all the bells and whistles. This means having a waist belt, button down epaulets, double flap collars, storm flap on the front, back vents, sleeve straps, and double breasted buttons. Many high street as well as premium to luxury brands have their own versions of this classic trench to choose from. Some of my personal favorites are from brands like and Other Stories, Mango Premium, Massimo Duty, and Cezanne. For the purpose of this video, I tried on two classic trench coats from high street brands. The first one is from Zara. This one retails for $139. What I like about this trench coat is that it's got a very classic design. It's got a straight cut and all the bells and whistles that you would look for in a trench coat. The material is also pretty good and feels pretty substantial. The second one I tried on is from and Other Stories. What I like about this one is that it's got a slightly oversized top. As you can see that the shoulders do drop a little bit lower than the one that I tried on at Zara. Overall, I like this design the best out of all the high street trench coats. However, the one drawback is that the material is a little thinner and not as substantial as the one I tried on at Zara. At $239, the price is definitely not as friendly. In recent years, the minimalist trend has taken a hold on modern life. Since many of us no longer live in war zones and our lifestyles do not necessitate all the features of a traditional trench coat, some of the more minimalist styles can also look very classic, but they have essentially done away with many unnecessary details for a cleaner look. Some of my favorite minimalist trench coats are number one, the Clyde trench coat from Cezanne. What I like about this style is that the lining details are very cute and provide a tasteful contrast to an otherwise pretty minimalist design. The vibe is very English countryside, which looks relaxed and chic at the same time. Number two, the Centurion Colt from Rosé Paris is also one of my favorites. Even though it is minimalist, the design is very modern with a distinctly oversized flavor. The sleeve opening details and back button make it very contemporary, but the overall aesthetic is still very clean and classic. Then I came across the relaxed trench coat from Kuriana, which is my third personal favorite. This style is distinctly different from the first two that I just showed you. It has a very clean and modern look with a flowy texture, which is designed to just drape on the body. I like how it still kept some elements of the classic trench, like the waist belt and the storm flap, but without the extra details that can clutter the eye. I would say that this trench coat has a more American or New World flavor to it, and the ones from Cezanne and Rosé that I showed earlier feel more European in contrast. I also like how this material is made of 100% Supima cotton with a bionic finish for water repellency, which is always a useful feature in the spring because the trench coat was initially designed to withstand rain. Now let's talk about the cut of a trench coat. The most classic trench coat cuts are straight and not too oversized. Think Burberry trench coats. Almost all of their trench coats are designed to be pretty straight and close to the body. This is perhaps the most timeless style that will always look good no matter what the trends are. 
However, I say that in recent years, we're seeing a gradual shift towards more oversized and roomy types of fits to allow for more comfort in movement and a relaxed, casual vibe. So we're moving away from those classic Burberry styles that look very feminine and put together and towards styles that have a bit more edge and gender neutrality. I personally love this trend, not only because the slouchier look is extremely chic right now, but the slightly oversized cut usually allows more room for what we're wearing inside. For example, if you're wearing a slightly oversized sweater inside and you're trying to put on a classic slim fit trench coat on top, you may find that the sleeves or armpit area may not be generous enough to accommodate your slouchy sweater underneath. My personal favorites of the more oversized cut trench coats are number one the napoleon trench coat from rose paris this coat comes with all the classic elements of a trench coat but you can see that it also has a pretty roomy underarm area and i love the oversized sleeve straps that pull the Y sleeves together also notice that the length of this trench coat is quite long, which I personally really love because it allows you to wear whatever length skirt or dress underneath without looking awkward. So I would always go for a long trench coat over a short one. I just think it's much more versatile. However, if you're on a petite side, you may want to take note of where the trench coat actually falls on you. It is also made of 100% cotton, which is pretty good value at this price point. Another one of my personal favorites, but this one is on the high end of the price point, is the Saint Laurent trench coat. The cut of this trench coat is pretty much perfect in my eyes. It is not too oversized, as you can see that the overall coat is pretty slim. But the shoulder and armpit area are pretty generous to allow for that ever so slightly slouchy vibe. Everything is just right to the point, not too much and not too little. If money were no object, I'd definitely go for this style. The color of a trench coat is also very important. Nowadays, trench coats come in pretty much all kinds of colors, but the most iconic ones are of course still the gabardine tan color. There are many variations of this classic trench color from the darker shades that are close to the camo shade to the lighter beige light types of color. I think any of these shades would look super classic. It ultimately comes down to what color works best on your skin tone. For example, I personally prefer the slightly darker shades of this tan color because I find the lighter beige shades tend to wash out my face color, especially on days when I'm a bit more tired. So I tend to go for a darker shade, which just looks more invigorating against my skin tone. The next most iconic color is perhaps the khaki green because this color brings back the military trench shade and it also evokes the quality of being a tough coat which resists strong wind and rain. For example, that Clyde trench coat that I showed earlier from Cezanne definitely has a stronger countryside vibe in the khaki green color. You can almost picture the late Queen Elizabeth or any of the royal family in one of these coats taking a leisure walk in the English countryside. The khaki green is also a very versatile color that can go with almost anything, perhaps except for pastel shades. So if you have a very neutral toned wardrobe, you can never go wrong with khaki green. Aside from gabardine tan and khaki green, black is also a very timeless and classic color. However, a black trench coat almost necessarily looks more dressy and formal than the other two. Traditionally, we almost think of it as an evening trench coat or one that you will wear to formal settings, which means it's highly appropriate for some of the more traditional conservative work settings or state events, for example, or if you just want a trench coat that looks chic with evening outfits. If it's your only trench coat, I would probably go with the gabardine tan or khaki green. So I have touched upon the material of a trench coat, which is also an important dimension to look at. The most traditional material for a trench coat is a twill cotton material. This type of cotton gives the coat a more rigid structure and you can see the distinct diagonal pattern of the weaves. This pattern and structure are what distinguish a good quality trench coat from an average or below average one. 
Many trench coats have some blend with polyester fiber, even coats from higher price points in the premium to luxury category. Why do these higher price brands do that? I don't know. Perhaps to achieve a higher profit margin, or perhaps the blend allows them to achieve a balance between weight and quality? If you have the answer to that, I'd love to know. It is true that a good quality trench coat in 100% high quality twill cotton generally has pretty substantial weight. If you ever tried on one of the Burberry trench coats, you probably have noticed that. So while I love sticking to the traditional organic high quality materials, perhaps there's an optimal trade-off when you factor in weight and texture. Another point I want to make here is that some trench coats don't come with lining and it is especially important to choose one that is fully lined because it just makes the coat so much more comfortable to wear and it also feels so much more luxurious when there is a good quality lining. This concludes today's video on choosing a trench coat. Let me know your thoughts below on what your favorite styles are and whether there are any brands you love when it comes to the classic wardrobe staple. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider supporting me by clicking the subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now!